morning guys. I am heading out to a job. It's Saturday morning. I got my gloves on, got my sweatshirt on, got everything on to keep me warm because it's in the 20s. Last night we had a little bit of snow, not a whole lot, just kind of a dusting. A lot of our HVAC brothers across the northeast are getting uh, over a foot of snow. But in North Carolina we don't get a whole lot of snow and if we got a dusting it's something. In fact, most of the state freaks out if that happens. To put it in perspective, yesterday we had a little bit of ice on our, on our walkway and that's about it. And they went to school back two hours. <laughs> we just kind of freak out about it. Although my son did fall down the walkway because right after I told him to wait until I put salt on it, he walked down it anyway. Guys, I have 28 volts coming in on the emergency signal between emergency and common, so our heat strip should be on. When I take the voltage out of the board over to the sequencer, we only have 12 volts. So we have the right voltage coming in, but leaving the board, we have the incorrect voltage, sort of indicating that the board has failed. I'm going to straight wire it on through, see if they'll come on, so we can get these people some heat. Guys, I've loosened up the board here. See there's a top. We go around to the bottom. You can see there are some areas of corrosion. You see that white corrosion on the board. And some down there on the terminals where the blower speeds are. You can't really see that. But you can see in the center of the board there, there's some corrosion. What I'm going to do is where these wires go down, you can see that they have these points here and then they go down into the circuit board. I'm going to interrupt them and plug stakeons right into these to jump it right across to the sequencer. See if we can go ahead and get that heat kit to come on and get these folks some heat. Okay guys, on the back side I have my orange and purple put on the stakeons for the low voltage down there. One for the common, so orange. One for emergency, that's purple. I'll probably jump emergency and W2 together here shortly. But I wanted to see if the sequencer would go ahead and come on if we did that. Guys, the unit just came back on, so I'm going to wait and see if the heat strips kick in or not. If they don't kick in, I'll confirm they have low voltage again. If they do have low voltage, I'll measure the voltage of the sequencer which was good before and if it's good we'll get into maybe the heat kit itself is damaged so 
We'll see. A little string of bad tidings here. So guys, we have everything jumped out between E and W2. We got 24 volts between W2 and common, E and common. We still don't have any action on our sequencer. So I'm going to stop the unit, double check that the wires have continuity to the sequencer, and if they do, I'm gonna go get a new sequencer. All right guys, what I did is I took my purple wire here on the bottom, that's our low voltage connection, and our orange is on the opposite side, and I ohmed it out between here and the connections down here just to make sure there was a straight path and there was no separations or problems. There wasn't, so I'm gonna go get a double stack sequencer put it in there but first I'm going to ohm out the heater coils to make sure they're okay guys this is our new sequencer you see there's kind of three rows the bottom row you see here and here that's the low voltage connections like your W2 and your common and then each row above that is a bank of heat strips you have the middle row here and on the top you'll have more terminals because on the top you'll also have your blower connection that goes over to either your board or your blower relay that will tell the blower to turn on if the sequencer closes and there's no call for the blower from the thermostat sort of a fail safe so just think of the top row is a bank of heat strips middle row is a bank and the bottom row is the low voltage control then you have an extra connection for your blower guys we have our new sequencer in there wired up and ready to go just like I showed you on the other one so we'll turn the power on and see how it does so as you can see here, I have my leads on this coil on this old sequencer, and we have open line, which indicates that it was failed. So the coil itself was the reason why it wasn't coming on, which is what we thought, because we were getting voltage, but nothing was happening. Things happen to these things. They break on the inside. They get brutal. So we'll make sure it comes on here, so we can button things up and go change that contactor outside and do what we need to do out there. But we'll confirm we have, should be 30 amps or so because it's 8kW. Well we have our heat strips working again. I can smell them from here. So no doubt the people down below are thinking that their house is burning down. But 8kW, it's online, so that's good. So now I can check outside. Guys, as you can see, this contactor looks like hell. So I'm gonna put a new sure switch in there. So it will run as best as it can for as many days as it has left. This thing's been trucking for a long time, so we'll keep her going as long as she can possibly go. So I'm going to take this thing out and I'll wire it up and I'll show you what I did. Alright guys, the new contactor's in. We have our compressor wires up here. Down here at the bottom is our line in. We have our common for the fan up top with the common from the compressor. We have the run from the compressor, second one down, second lug down. And our other run wires there, the one that jumps across to the capacitor and the one for the fan motor right there. And of course we have L1, L2 and our low voltage on this then Y1 in common. So we're going to start things back up. It is icy and cold today. So I'm starting to get a little bit of a chill, <laughs> but it's not too bad. I'm gonna start things back up and make sure it runs properly. Check the refrigerant pressure, see what it's running on a day like today. Should be pretty low on the suction side, something 30, 40 PSI range. So turn it back on. Guys, I have the air conditioning jumped out there just so it'll melt the ice off here before we get started and then I'm gonna run it in heat like I said I don't think it's a defrosting issue I think it's more along the lines of it was ice and snow we see this about every year so I'm gonna run it and see how she does and probably probably be spectacular guys I have the Z manifold on we're running the pressure of around 32 right now over around 190 or so our clamps on my Chinese clamp I modified it a little bit so it would be a little bit better Yeah, 97 degrees on the discharge, 31 degrees on the suction line, so it's very cold. But with 31 degrees, we have, let's see, around 20 degrees of superheat. If you look, kind of, we have a little bit of ice still left on the unit. Just a little bit, though. And if we see, it'll be around 70 degrees by the time we get done down here. Look up to the top, we have, it's really between 30 and 40. Let's go with 40. We have 219 over 42, but at 30, we have 196 over 35. So we should be right in between those two, which it looks like by the time we're done, we will be. We're at 200 now. We're almost up at 35, so looks like we're going to be in the ballpark, but we're not going to mess with charge, that's for sure. So 
It's actually looking pretty good on the charge side. Got to keep it going as long as possible. Our discharge air is around 28 degrees off the top. So we get about, um, you know, eight or 10 degrees of temperature change. So we are taking some heat out of the air, even when it's 36 degrees. But there's a little peak at charging the heat pump as well. There's a charging chart. Looks like we have a little tiny bit of snow falling here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let it run for a few minutes. I'm gonna go let them know it should be good to go. Double check the amperage from the air handler to make sure the heat strips are on. If it is, I won't bother you guys by showing you again. And that'll be all for this one. And I will see you guys on the next one.